Live from Brooklyn, New York, this is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. Well, you know that I'm the guy. I'm out here living life. I'm busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Moves and catching flights. So please don't waste my time. I'm busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sadler, where we have responsible discussions on the entertainment business the entertainment culture. I'm, of course, your host, Head Honcho, Vegan Chorizo Poppy, founder of BNB, otherwise known as the Bald Nigga Bombshell, in your podcast studio, in your headphones, whether they are wired or Bluetooth, in your car speaker, in your phone speaker, in your surround sound speakers, visually on YouTube, all, all that mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. And I go by Chinedu. I'm the only man to sit in front of Taylor Rooks, but not tell no lie. Armand Sather. Here with the gang. Miss Two Bees is back. Yes, I'm happy to be back. You had to, had to up. handle Let's some real adult and shit. She came, and she came yellow as mm. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I came mm. shining bright. You Here know, I had to come through after a long little hiatus. I was adulting like a motherfucker. Mm-hmm. It happens. So, yeah. Should be happening, but you here, you here. Will's here, of course. What's yes. up? What's up, Will? How you doing, brother? I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good to have my partner back. You know, my yeah. <laughs> my, my 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 couch partner. We got some new couches and stuff like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. But you know, I'm happy she's back. For sure. Shout out to Kojo, though. Right, he kept the seat warm. Big yeah. shout out to Kojo. Kojo. Yeah. What, yeah. What, what was your reaction when you saw that, that we called him in? I loved it because mm-hmm. I know he loves J Cole. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I'm just like, you know what? This is going to be a very good, thoughtful response responsible mm-hmm. conversation yeah it was it was I've, I've listened back a couple of times now i really enjoyed it because I, I just see every time i see a stupid take I, <laughs> I, just, I just have to cleanse it with what i felt was a very good and fair conversation so i mean if you haven't heard uh con- confirmation bias featuring kojo make sure you tap into that um and while you're tapping into that you can subscribe to our youtube channel for all visual episodes or subscribe subscribe <laughs> On your favorite audio streaming platform, like, comment, share, all that good stuff, all those things that you do. If you would like some exclusive access to some bonus content, you can subscribe to our Patreon, the podcast only fans, patreon.com backslash stay busy pod. Let's jump into this chat. Um, there's yes. some things to get to. It's, yeah. it's, it's one of those weeks in hip hop where it's like, great not too much happened but yeah we have a podcast and we got to talk about shit so not a lot happened so <laughs> we, we about to be dragging the fuck out these topics we i'm kidding make it work. i'm kidding we, we, yeah, we gonna make it work but this uh last week i went to see uh, jack harlow saw him perform for the first time it was at our uh, brooklyn paramount mm, um shout out to city sound vault they they blessed me tickets all that vip experience it was lovely Drinks are great. I love I love the Brooklyn Paramount venue. I'm not sure y'all have been there, right? It's yeah. really good venue. It's maybe top three venues. Really good venue. venue. I like, think it belonged to LIU at a point before they sold it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So re- really good venue. Always happy to be there. And like the first time I went, it was for party next door. I was upstairs. But this time I was in like VIP area, like right by the stage. So mm-hmm. super, super close. Mm-hmm. So I got to see everything. Uh Layla mm-hmm. opened for him. She was dope. Nice. I really liked her live. Um Jack, though, you know, <laughs> Jack. I really like Jack's music. Performance wise, he didn't really do it for me. Like, I think that without it's like the epitome of mid, where it's like, again, I like the songs, but his performance of them didn't add to the experience at all. Mm. He he had backing tracks, so that's already you know you you already got kind of gotta t- take a take a tally that's off a of standard that. Now, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a lot of people who can carry their show without it. But um, yeah, he just he just rapped like and i'm not expecting jack to do choreo or anything crazy but like no backup dancers mm, like it, it was just him it was literally just him okay. was there any stage set up like was there any stage yeah up? yeah he, he had a setup so it kind of looks like um kind of looks like a like like a therapy office because it's I, I guess this is still him pushing his second album come home the kids miss you he's on um, tour right now or is it just <laughs> so he, I'm just confused. My no, no, it's okay. Know this shit. It's okay. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, no. It's just, it's just, yeah. It's just kind of, you know. Not. That that was a one off, but he did announce he okay, has a tour see, and album coming soon. Interesting. Um, but yeah, like the stage setup was cool, but for the most part, it was like 
I don't need to see him perform again. Like it was, it was just kind of just was what it was. It was beautiful women out there. Jack brought out the women, so shout out to that. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. There's some joints out there. Like a pr- 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 pretty <laughs> diverse crowd. Look? Um, well, so <laughs> you both are my close friends, so you guys saw. How no, I was adulting like a motherfucker. Oh, you didn't I see? Missed okay. It, yeah. So, um, at That's the so. En- at the end of the show, I'm like in the VIP area about to leave. And these these five white women call me over <laughs> and they're like, they, 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 they see my media badge. They're like, oh, you're media. So, you know where Jack's after party is. I, I hadn't heard of an after party, but I do know his manager. So I was like, I mean, I haven't heard anything, but I'll DM his manager and ask. So I DM his manager. I was like, yo, I got these five joints. Like they try and meet Jack. Like, what's up? What's up? He's like, yeah, he's like showering and changing. I'll let you know. So I give him my number to text me. He ain't text me. So, um. <laughs> I like go to the bar with these five white joints. I talk to them a little more. Like they were in like their early thirties. So okay. yeah, it was a, it was, I I feel like just Jack's like twenty six, twenty seven at this point. So he's kind of in that middle range where mm-hmm. it's like the teens probably fuck with him, but like mm-hmm. there's some older people people our age who yeah. like fuck with him too. So now we the older. I mean, Damn. yo, but that's it, crazy it though. Is what it is. We are like, considered the older yeah, crowd. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, I I think I enjoyed the overall experience more. Like they had like a media pre party in the in the lounge at Brooklyn Paramount. So that is real cute. Yeah, because like, you know they don't be taking foods. care of media like they, that. They really don't. They like, do us dirty. It's some shows you just go to and you just in general mission like yeah. you just out there with no the regular plus people one. yes yeah yeah I don't, I don't fuck with it but like nah. i got i got a plus one so i brought my home girl from jersey Fire. um food free Fire. drinks and then drink tickets for when you actually got into the oh, show nice. some some free swag all that like it was it was cool it's a kid cool. so I, I fuck with them good people good people but yeah the show was kind of mid so jack you know i fuck with you but you gotta you, you gotta step up the performance my dog I need that. I mean, but you always got to start somewhere. I remember, like, going, because I consider Jack Harlow Drake's son. Mm-hmm. And I remember going to the Would You Like a Tour yeah. on Barclays. And, like, Drake wasn't always good. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. you know, hopefully there's room for growth. Yeah. Jack's been around a little, a little minute, though. Like, I've, I've been hip to him since, like, 2018. So this I'm is really like... surprised you didn't have backup dancers. Yeah, that that, that, like, that, that that'll be a layup for him. Yeah, just yeah, just because. Or did even bring some girls from the crowd. Yeah, or something. something like yeah, bro. Because he that, that's his whole brand is that like lover boy heartthrob yeah. type dude. So I think like he, yeah, he lean into that. And you got yeah, records bro. for that. The the joint with Chris Brown, like mm-hmm. absolutely. He's, he's, uh, the love love is Joe joint with Static Major and Bryson. The one that like, he just got. Yo, I love that song. Real loving bad. on me. Yeah, yeah that's that's a great record. Yeah, like it. It definitely reminded me. Of because I don't I don't really play his albums much anymore, but like I, I did really like them, and they got joints on there that you just they didn't catch on the way his singles like a What's Poppin or a Tyler Harrow or a Loving on Me or First Class did, but like Jack got he got joints, he like does. he he's he sneaky got joints, so it was a good reminder of that. But yeah, overall, I left it like I I saw him. I got I, I could say I saw him live, but hey, didn't really move. See me. you next time. <laughs> um, moving on. Um, so. <laughs> What I, I, listeners at this point, like what what are things we talk about? We talk about Sabrina Carpenter. We talk about Lil Baby. We talk about Drake. We talk about J Cole. We talk about Kendrick Lamar. Uh, but this time it's actually some. Well, no. Whenever we talk about it, it's always worthwhile. And Kendrick did his first interview, probably since he dropped Mr. Morale in like 2022. Um, so he was on the cover of Harper's Bazaar, um, and he did a cover story interview, which was. The, the part of the written portion was done by a writer there, a black woman writer. So shout out to them for giving her that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Har- Harper's Bazaar, if you're not familiar, it is a woman's fashion style luxury magazine. Good man. Um, so it was, it was it was very interesting, like just the, the, that that placement of it all. Um, so yeah, the, the the writer handled like part of the intro, but Kendrick was interviewed by his former label mate SZA. Um, and so naturally, seeing that he's doing press gets you intrigued you're like all right man like all, all we've heard is music all we've seen is shows videos right. the you the the super bowl announcement so like you're actually doing an interview let's 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 see what you got for us read through it and i was like okay i think this would this is really dope to someone who probably cares about wh- where's kendrick's spirituality at Yo, like that wh- what's up killing. with his self-exploration oh shit Kendrick is running. Like, oh my like, God. <laughs> what says it said? That's real pretty. Yeah. That was so pretty. Bro. Um, so, I, but, but before I get into my qualms with that style of interview, how'd, how'd y'all feel about it? 
All right, so I'm working on, you know, being a bit more lighthearted. So I'm going to start off with what I like. Oh okay. Lead oh with my, love, oh part my. two. Lead with love. Oh I'll see what you did gracious. there. <laughs> part two. So I did like that um, we can expect a movie mm-hmm. uh, with them yeah. and Cat Williams is a mm-hmm. part of it. So I'm like, okay, we can probably expect some laughs out of that. But, um, you know, I do wish that a journalist... Um, interviewed Kendrick so that he can be challenged to kind of really say what we want to hear. Yeah. Um. Hopefully, there's another opportunity for him to like you know cut through the fluff because I'm happy that he's grounded spiritually and that his mental is on point and stuff like that. But like, this is one of those people I gotta separate the artist from <laughs> the music. She's a very unique individual. Yeah, like, you know, once they made the thread with all the lies and stuff, <laughs> and then, like, now I'm, I'm looking at her, like, the questions and, like, the line of questioning, like, she clearly made it up herself. Mm. Um, Yeah, it just, I just felt like I lost brain cells reading that shit. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to say, it felt like being a fly on the wall in a room you didn't want to be in. <laughs> people who used to fuck. And people, yeah, like if people that used to like, yeah, Kayla, people yeah, used, used to, to be fuck. together or some shit. And yes. it's like, and it's like, it's like, it's like, yeah, like this is cool, but I'm literally, like you said, I'm losing brain cells. Two, this nigga's talking like he is levitating yeah. at all times. <laughs> Like he looks like he talks. He talks like he doesn't. His feet doesn't touch the ground. He just like levitates everywhere, y'all. They and call then, me crazy. <laughs> and they call me a madman. Like, and then it's just like the scissor thing too. It's like, bro, scissor. Like the music is amazing and everything, but sometimes she. I mean, she talks like she's levitating too. But like, yes, levitating by her head, like <laughs> a little airheady. But it's okay. It's just like, bro. Yeah, I don't know. Also, there's a bias there. You know, yeah. she's. Also mm-hmm. have relations with Drake, so she is she gonna ask the questions that we want to know? Yeah, I, I I feel like in their mind it was a good idea that SZA has worked so recently with Drake and his former label mates of Kendrick because she'd be, she'd be in the middle, but I feel like she wouldn't ever go there with either one of them. So it it, it wasn't the best selection in my it mind. It was a snooze. Yeah, it was. <laughs> that's <was> brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Give her her tens, um, but, <laughs> but yeah, like yo, when she started with the "Are you mentally ill?" shit, I was like, oh, like yo, well, we might be going somewhere. And it was a damn insider. From yeah, the set. and and then I kept reading. I was like, all right, whatever. Like, what wh- what three things have you worked on in your self transformation? He's like the power of honesty and vulnerability not being a weakness which you know something will touched on weeks ago so we it was talk like, about it salute salute to that like but yeah we don't care about that right I, now I, we don't know I, mean. I, yeah. I, I don't know if it was another instance where i needed to remove the beef lens for, from the situation but but even beyond the beef like i want to hear about the music specifically, the process, like, yes. like Euphoria was like a three part track. Well, what was the recording process for that? Uh, Six sixteen in L.A. There's all the theories about you rapping from Drake's perspective. Like, what, like, get getting into that. And I think these are the things that a journalist would ask that SZA wouldn't ask. Again, I get it. You pick their friend, their former label mate. They're comfortable with them. They'll open up to a certain level, but she's not gonna ask those those types of things. Like, what was what really was the purpose of this interview? Like the title is Kendrick Lamar gets personal and yes, like we got, we got personal details of him. He's talking about the last time he cried, the first time he cried. I don't even believe like, that was the first time he cried Yeah, either. there's no way well, you, you like a 37 year old man. 2011 is not the first time you cried. Well, my nigga, you was a baby. He like, said he allowed himself to cry. <laughs> like, you, you, no, you baby. crazy. <laughs> like, get the fuck out of here, bro. This nigga said you was a baby. <laughs> no, but for real, though. Oh, like, you probably wham, wham, wham. Like, before, come on, like, man. You was wham, 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 nigga. Yo, like, like, come on, bro. You like, got a whooping before, He said he allowed himself to cry. So I was, you know, like, when we be holding our shit, he probably Probably, sure. That was probably the first time yeah. he, you know, just oh, my let it goodness be free. Goodness. I don't know, but yo, I, I was mm. these TDE niggas and yo. <laughs> these TDE niggas is controlling the narrative they so are. crazy these niggas, right now. Uh, master manipulators. They're <laughs> the evil empire, bro. Like these niggas are like 
Yeah, it's like you ever see that meme or not that meme, but like uh, like that political picture where it's like the one person like they're stabbing, but like if you zoom the picture back, it's like it's really like someone chasing someone else, and it's like yeah, yeah, that my bad. That's what TDE is doing right now with the narrative. Yeah. I don't, I I just it, it's I don't know who was working on. Stupid people. People. <laughs> Stupid people. people. I think he's a doing what he always does, though. Yeah, and I think, yeah, that's, I think that's why I ain't really care for him yeah. much. I, and, I enjoyed the battle. It's but... just like at this point, and it's funny, too, because I saw, I, I saw, naturally, in social media, you see a, a myriad of opinions. I saw people who were eating it up. Like, Yo, I love hearing about his spirituality. I love hearing about this, that, and the third. And I'm just like, oh, he runs? Uh, all right, whatever, <laughs> nigga. Like, glad you enjoyed that. He has I, I, I saw one dude who said, like, if this is too much, Kendrick's doing too much. And I'm just like, again, he dropped dropped the tracks. He dropped, he did the pop out in June. He dropped the music video in July. He did the Super Bowl announcement in, in September. And now he did this in October. As much as I might have my qualms with him, I don't, I, again, I don't think it's him doing too much. It's everyone else doing too much with the situation. Correct. I, I was excited to see, oh shit, he's doing an interview. What is he going to talk about? Like Same. that curiosity, because we all, always harped on the fact like yo he's just he's just dropping this shit and staying inside like we we, we don't see him we don't know what's on his mind so it was exciting and, still and yeah until you actually read it the only thing that, that they touched on SZA asked she was like well what does not like us mean and i was like all right finally like finally we, we gonna get it this nigga's this nigga's about to triple down on it like you know he he, he gonna smoke him he's <laughs> hold on I, I have the quotes here please i have please, the quotes here please uh please. Laughing, not like us, not like us is the energy of who I am, the type of man I represent. Now, if you identify with the man that I represent, this man has morals, he has values, he believes in something, he stands on something, he's not pandering. Again, I thought I was about to get spicy here. This nigga said pandering. He's a man who can recognize his mistakes and not be afraid to share the mistakes and can dig deep down into fear based ideologies or experiences to be able to express them without feeling like he's less of a man. If I'm thinking of not like us, I'm thinking of me and whoever identifies with that. He had me before pandering. Mm. Like mm. that first half was like, oh, all right. I, 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 I immediately just kind of like laughed and scoffed at this. I'm like, my nigga, you, you attributing this, high, this like high level moral ass approach to. You could have simply said like seven words. I hate Drake. I wanted to smoke him. Like that. That's <laughs> it, my nigga. Like granted, and we would have ate that up for real. Granted, not like us has become an anthem. It's become a rallying cry for sports. It's become something that united the coast. Like all all that. But at at the core, you made this song to take one nigga out. So I'd, I I honestly would have much more respected it if he kept it a buck. Like yo. I, I wanted to win the battle, I, I, and I wanted to do it with with a hit song. My nigga, I like, mean, playing devil's advocate, the way SZA asked it was dumb. Also, that yeah, yeah. like what like the fuck he, you mean? What is not like us? He mean? answered the question. He did. He did. So he did. that's that's like like bitch, you know, girl. That's mm -hmm. not what we want to know. Yeah. So yeah, they they played with us. But I I think for an artist who's media trained in that way and also knows when to just completely abandon some shit and like. Because at the end of the day, like, I've learned with, with these interviews that I do with artists, like, pu publicists will tell you, oh, he's got this coming, he's got this coming. So sometimes if you ask a question that they could answer in one way, but they have something they really want to talk about, they'll, they'll find a way to steer it yeah, yeah, yeah. to the thing that they're promoting. And right now, we know he's got Grammys coming up, he's got Super Bowl coming up, and the biggest moment of the year was him beating Drake. So I, I personally feel like he, he, he could have steered it to where, like, what does not like us mean? That Canadian nigga <laughs> who's biracial. He's not like us. Bro. I wanted to beat his ass. I, I feel like he could have said he that. Answered he pulled the it, metro. He yeah. answered it like Negro Domus or something, bro. It was crazy, <laughs> my nigga. Like, really, sit down and read that full thing. He said, what is not like us? Not like, 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 bro, that's some really, like, crazy, like, Negro After Domus pandering, shit. I was just it's, like. It's mm, like, bro, come on, yo, man. You, like, you this did nigga, too much. You did too much. Yeah. This nigga is funny, bro. Um, and, and then she, like, asked a follow-up. She was like, uh, can I say something else in that realm? Or you want me to get away from that? And he was like, is it mean? She's like, no, it's more. Mm, this is a long ass question. She, she took mad long to get to her questions. So, so when you feel the surge of energy in records like that, where is that root? Is it anger? And then he's like, I don't believe I'm an angry person, lying ass nigga. But but I do believe in love and war, and I believe they both need to exist. Okay, something we talked about last week as well. And my awareness of that allows me to react to things, but not identify with them as who I am. 
just allowing them to exist and allowing them to flow through me. That's what I believe. This, I don't know, bro. This, 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 all, you, all this ta- round. He's talking like he's levitating, y'all. Flowery ass language, bro. Get to the point. Like, yo, That's keep it I a buck, bro. Like, you, you, you were angry. You, you was angry when the nigga used Tupac and Snoop Dogg's <laughs> voice. You was angry at the at the at the uh, well, we the big three. Like we started the league. Right now, I feel like Muhammad Ali. You was angry at the Spider Man meme shit. He was angry that Cole said, "If everybody steppers, I'm cleaning my plate." Like, bro, stop. It's, the Pharrell look, pieces. Yes, yeah, like uh, you, you wanted to inherit beef for another nigga. Pause. Like, bro, you you was angry at a lot. <laughs> you was angry at a lot. So that it was it was it was really annoying. Um, but yeah, I think ultimately to get beyond the Kendrick thing, I these artist to artist interviews are cool. Like they're cool v- visually. Like when Snoop and Lotto did one for Rolling Stone. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not. I know you don't like Rolling Stone, but but um, Snoop but and Lotto. It was cool. Yeah, it was cool. It was like oh I shit, like a tense for like, that. like the the OG, like the young star coming up. It was mm-hmm. cool. Like the, they're cool, but for people, especially now in this era where people are actually hungry for genuine journalism, like real interviews, real storytelling. We don't need to see. Like if if I want to see celebrities linking up, like I'll like I'll watch out on IG Live, I'll watch out on a Twitch stream. Like when when it comes to publications, Harper's Bazaar, Rolling Stone, like all all these reputable publications, we want to see writers talking to these people because yes. they, they'll approach the, the conversation from a completely different direction. Um, so that was ultimately it for me. So it was like, well, while I give Harper's Bazaar credit for letting the black woman writer like take the story she only wrote the intro like right. like like so it was, was kind of like a, oh yeah like is this a scissor interview but you could just you know put your name on it or put up this little intro together right and like sit by and hear them talk like, I mean, like and that line was what she said scissor smells like a... <laughs> yeah. i'm like who wrote that Smell like a like a, a cor- s- something harlem in harlem corner, oh my god but a luxurious op- mm-hmm. it was it was a lot it was it was, it was very very <laughs> flowery language yeah did a lot but yeah um you know the interview is out so hit up harper's bazaar kendrick lamar gets personal um you know <laughs> if, if, if you're into spirituality and cardio then then you'll love it um you know and if you're looking for more in-depth like conversation about because oh because that's also what like these types of things are for like and granted he, he has things to promote they're obviously a few months away but like we don't have his perspective on what happened. And that's something we talked about. Like back in the day, niggas would be going on radio talking about shit yeah. that's happening actively, like right, like in, in the present. Like we, we, we don't have that. And, you know, uh, are, are we selfish for wanting that? I, I don't think so. I, I, th- I think as fans, like you kind of want that context because I don't even think people like you can't really pinpoint what the issue was between them. Like you could chalk it up to bravado, male ego, like, we're like we don't really know what the issue was, and I think like that would help people to add a lot of context to a lot of different things that happened. So yeah, it's just uh, it's like okay, I guess like thanks, but and it's to be continued because <laughs> then the Super Bowl's on the way, Grammys yep. on the mm-hmm. way. It's just, mm-hmm. I'm tired of these. This thing about to sit down with like Shannon Sharp or something much. <laughs> so- oh my god. <laughs> Oh my God, that happened. He was with Cat Williams the other day. So. Oh my goodness gracious. I, I was about to try to do a Shannon Sharp impression, but it's not good. I'm, it's glad, not good. You, I'm glad you did. Yeah. I'm glad you didn't. Nigga, if Kendrick's on first take, I'm going to like literally. Nah, like, nah. He, I, don't, I don't think bro. we do that. I don't think we do that. Oh, Is this a nigga oh, Stephen A? <laughs> I can't do it either. Nah, I'm laughing too much. <laughs> I can't do it. But one, one day I'll, I'll give you all my Stephen A and my Shannon Sharp impression, but today is not that day. Um, but all right, moving on. Kind of related to this situation. Um, I believe it was Friday. Today's what the twenty first, so yeah, it had right. to be Friday. Yeah. Friday the eighteenth. Yes, my my ten year anniversary. Uh, if you want to send me money to my cash app, dollar sign. Actually, men don't give out their cash app, so just forget I even said that. Mm-hmm. Um, Thugger, right. y- y- young thug, King Slime, uh, Slat himself, um, tweeted. He added Drake. He added Future. And he added Metro Boomin, and he said, "We all brothers. Music ain't the same without us collabing." And a big deal was made of this tweet. One thug tweeting from jail. Typically, he's only tweeted at, at like Mariah the scientist, like "Yo, Bay, I miss you." Tweeting pictures of her and all that. But like, you know, clearly thug knows what's going on in the in this world, and people letting him know that this is music not hitting. So thug tweeting that was a big deal in itself. 
It's another Atlanta nigga cosigning Drake, even though allegedly, you know, he's colonizing them. Um, and then Future retweeted it. And there, the one of the ongoing conversations throughout this whole thing is like people thinking that there was room for reconciliation with Future. We didn't know what the issue was. We thought it was probably over women. So we don't know. Um, feelings on Thug tweeting this. Feelings on Future retweeting it. Do you want to see Drake and Future link up again? Do you want to see Drake and Metro link up again? Do you think Drake and Metro could <sighs> mend things? Like, just g- give it all to me. Pause. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if I be for the bitch, we're going to be forever. Mm. <laughs> but um, I'm here for for it. Like, I'm here for the reconciliation. I do mm. think that music is boring. And, like, seriously, Young Thug, it's very likely that he's going to come home and it's like, what the hell is going to happen? Yeah. So he's trying to plant that seed and mm-hmm. I'm here for it. So Yeah. Do you think that, do you think does come home for real? I mean, based on... This case is a mess, bro. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's a mess. Based on what we see, it is a mess. It definitely is. So, I don't know. He just might. And the new judge yeah. is doing what he's yeah. supposed to do, though. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm cool with it. Uh... I don't care for Drake leaking over Metro again. I'm kind of cool on Metro's beats, but that's yeah, just me. He's, he's yeah. gotten stale. <laughs> yeah, uh, but Drake and Future, like, yeah, they got to link up, bro. Like, we got to, like, I don't Yeah, especially if it's, like, over, over, if it's over a woman, like, which I'm not saying, like, women don't matter or anything, but, like, y'all. That's right, Will. Get it. <laughs> I got that knife right to your neck. <laughs> get it. Y'all niggas need to get it together. <laughs> y'all we love need to get women it together. on Facebook. Y'all niggas need to get it together because, you know, he, there's gonna be more out there. There's more fish in the sea, and if y'all beefing over that, then like, come on. It like, ain't their wife, so yeah. It, like, it's just always so interesting. Celebrities, all like the niggas, all fuck with like the same eight joints, like and, yeah. and be mad over Except them. Except for Bow Wow and Chris Brown, yeah. they bring the joints to the circle. I'm just like, bro, like what, like you, you had to know this was inevitable. Like well, somebody still got feelings or ego, pride, like all these things mixed together. It's just like, bro, it's so many women in the world, and yeah. y'all have access to so many. Of them, so whatever. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I think, again, like, when we look back at the We Don't Trust You albums or push-ups or Family Matters, Drake never really said anything too crazy to Future. He even said, Pluto shit made me sick to my stomach. We ain't never really been through it. Yeah. Future just called Drake, like, his number one fan. is like, my nigga, I, I, I will be, a, I, I'm one of your big fans, too. Like, nigga, you made March Madness. You made tricks on me. You made, you know, love. Like, come on. And like, Drake like, is a music fan. Like, he's exactly. very open about the people who he, like, he's fanned out over Bow Wow publicly. Yeah, like, he's, fabulous. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, he he loves to give yeah. people their flowers. Yeah, so uh, it, it, it just never got spicy enough between them to where I didn't think there was any room for reconciliation. And I, I think this show's, like, and a lot of, like, people I know in Atlanta or people I know who are familiar with the area, like, Thug is really looked at as, like, one of the OGs of of the of that generation. He is. And, like, the glue within it, like, you know, he, he gave us Lil Baby and Gunna. Um, you know, like, he's, he's, he's cool with everyone. Like, th- like, Thug got, I think the only person I know of that Thug really has a problem with is, like, Pusha T. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't think, like, Thug is, literally everyone loves Thug, so. I mean, he did allegedly almost shot a kid Lil Wayne. Right. Ye- years ago. Years ago. But, you know, you know, th- th- things change. Like, n- niggas could get over. Shout out to growth. Like, you tried to kill me and now we cool. Like, shout out to that. But, um, you know, um. Fair. Perhaps <laughs> all of this wouldn't have gone down if Thug was out. Like Thug might have been able to at least at least the future of Metro Park. Kendrick Wool was inevitable, I feel. Right. But the the future of Metro Park, I think Thug would have kind of mediated that. So um, you know, it was it was good to see that. And it's honestly like I mean, obviously I I, I haven't stopped listening to Drake and Future's music together, even though they're they haven't made music together recently. And it's just like sometimes I'm like I don't want to believe this will never happen again, but if it is, like, damn, listening to Live from the Gutter hits different. Listening to Wait for You hits different. Yeah. It's like, let's let's let let's see it again. Now, I want to ask y'all because I saw someone tweet. They quoted Thug's tweet, and they were like, "If Atlanta people are reaching out to Drake to reconcile their differences, does that lessen the impact of the Atlanta verse on Not Like Us?" They're taking it too literal. Like, yeah, people are crazy. It, it's taken too literally. Like, Niggas is trying to retroactively. People are crazy, bro. Yeah, like he said Legit. what he said. Like, 
you know, the whole theme of the song is that Drake is a colonizer. Mm -hmm. So he's just, you know, it's wordplay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Like, mm -hmm. the verse is still going to hit, especially at the Super Bowl. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's not that, yeah. Yeah, it's People not. People are just, yeah, bro. I don't think that's how anyone in Atlanta <clears throat> felt. I think Kendrick was just making shit rhyme and just being funny and, like, pointing things out. Like, you're from Canada. You're not even from the States. Mm -hmm. And you're, like, you know, cosplaying all these different regions whenever it benefits you. So yeah. that's all, but it's not that deep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I it, it was very noticeable to me, like Atlanta niggas' silence throughout all that. Aside from Yachty, Yachty was like the only one talking. I forgot he's um, from Atlanta. Yeah, <laughs> yo. But like, all, all, all the <laughs> niggas stayed silent. Stuff. Like, none, none, none of them <gasps> co-signed the verse, but none of them really defended. And then he get unfollowed. Uh, he did, and then they followed good. each other again. I think they unfollowed it. Like they've, they, their shit is just all over the place. I, I do know someone who worked on his podcast and there were issues between them and apparently they were fixed. I don't know. So Drake I, can't afford no more fallouts. I, <laughs> I mean, falling out with Yachty is not the worst thing I mean, world. yeah, Forget actually, that, that one's necessary. That, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you want that. Actually, <laughs> you, I almost you forgot. Want that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it was like, and I, 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 I respected Atlanta niggas staying silent because one, of course, it, like, if you would want your friends to defend you, but, He's a grown ass man who could have handled shit himself. Um, but it was like, yeah, it was cool that, okay, no Atlanta niggas are co-signing this. So it's like, to me, it was always just Kendrick is saying this to win the battle. Yeah. And a lot of people would agree with it because Drake has worked with a lot of Atlanta niggas. Like the majority of his features the last few years have been Atlanta niggas. And like, of course, Atlanta is one of the hottest cities in the world with, with like some of the greatest artists currently. So it's like, a lot of niggas run to Atlanta when they need a check balance, and and some of them don't even balance they check out. Like like <laughs> niggas, niggas will call gun and not get a hit, call a little baby not get a hit. So oh it's true like, though. Like if everyone's doing it, but um, Jacquees could give them one though. Shout, shout, shout out to shout out to niggas. Stop sleeping on Jacquees. Yo, Jacquees, stop sleeping. It's the goat right there. King of um, Yo, facts. But yeah, like and on and it's to the point. Like I remember during his tour, he said like Atlanta was like the greatest music city like drake might as well be like an adopted son when you look at his work with like two chains uh future thug baby gunner all them niggas quavo migos like he he, that nigga really loves atlanta and rightfully so he love so houston he love yeah. atlanta mm -hmm. he love it you slim it yeah like yeah. we all know that <laughs> yeah yeah it's it, 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 literally it's been since the beginning of so his I mean, career so yeah um yeah i mean i i, I appreciated thug being vocal we no, notably, uh, Metro did not retweet it. Drake hasn't said anything either. Um, but Twenty One's birthday party was this weekend, and academics had this report that apparently there was a ceasefire between Drake and Metro, where they would be able to be in the same room and nothing would pop off. Not that anything would pop off between them, anyways. I, I, they're two very nice guys. Um, but I, I had to do like a gallery of the party for work. I didn't see any pictures of them, so. If they were there, they they were not photographed. I don't know, so we'll see. But yeah, man, let's 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 move past this 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 hatred negativity era. Everybody come together, kumbaya, hug, kiss. And let's let's make some fire. Like let's let's, yeah. let's get some good music again. Because I, I I'm officially declaring it here. I, I said I've said it in group chats. I've said it to my friends. Niggas might think I'm joking. I'm I'm kind of post hip hop right now. Like no cap. <laughs> The shit I've been listening to lately, Sabrina Carpenter, Billie Eilish, Charlie XCX. I've started listening to Chapel Roan, Shoot She Hard. Um, R&B, of course, Leon Thomas, Skylar Simone, uh, Chantel May, motherfucking Kenyon Dixon. Um, who's the other? There's another one. I'm free. Jazz Karras. Like, <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> Hip-hop not moving me, bro. It's not. I feel you. It's not. And, and I'm... I am slowly reaching my threshold with uh with the with the sexy drill stuff too. Like, like <laughs> slowly, <laughs> like, I've been there. I am, like, yo, oh, yo, I, 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 th th this past weekend it, it was a couple different niggas who put out new new tracks, and I was just like, you know, man. Again, it goes back to no one makes it as well as the original, dude. And yeah, it's just yeah. It's a copycat league too. Yeah, we're like we're copycat. That's why I'm, I'm over it. We're getting closer Super and closer to, to that ceiling. Like we're getting closer and closer to that ceiling. So, yeah, man, I'm 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 post hip hop until you know until uh 
until further notice. So that's where I'm at. But Thug, come home, man. We we miss you. Word. Miss you, dog. Um, speaking of post hip hop and reasons why, uh, Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg did an interview. They were on the Stephen A. Smith show, and they talked about the current state of music and sampling. Pretty much saying like, as of late, you know, these producers. The advancements of, te- of technology have made things easier. You can just jump off Fruity Loops, rap over a beat, and make a hit. You don't need the musical talent. You don't need the, the, you know, the structure and all that stuff. And, you know, they're not too happy with this current generation, especially when you get to sampling. But they do feel like it's kind of cycling back to where, you know, the, the musicians were the best one. There are people who are actually talented. But um, I wanted to ask you, yeah, yeah, thoughts. It was only like a two, two and a half minute clip. but. Uh, you yeah, got yeah, thoughts on it, especially the the lazy sampling thing. Like that's a conversation I had when one of my boys was like, "Oh, they they were lazy in the '90s too." I was like, "Well, yeah, I don't think they were saying their era was perfect, mm-hmm. but it was better than you know the, the era." Well, eh, yeah, I, I don't know. Stand on it. I don't know. Stand on it. Say I think it. I think that they were a lot more creative back then because they had to be. Mm-hmm. Whereas now you can kind of just like. Oh, you you can just b- keep it really simple, keep it really basic, and like pop off because you have more avenues to push the music. Like, I don't know. So, but yeah, I mean that and and the irony because Kojo loves this topic as well. He also is one of those people that says, "Oh, they were lazy in the '90s as well." Juicy is one of the most laziest samples ever. Like, all right, I hear you, but like, like '90s rappers grew up on like jazz like mm-hmm. and their parents were not listening to hip hop. Yeah. So they're sampling those jazz records. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And like, you know, Kanye always did it like to the best to me. Yeah. And um now the new producers if there are any because with the technological advancements they're like what do you call them now? Like loops. Yeah. Or loops. They're they're yeah. just beat makers. Beat makers. A lot of them aren't even producers. Yeah, they're like beat makers. That's what you mean. Yeah, that's what we. They're beat makers now. So, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of plugins, loops, getting loops from other people. <laughs> that ass. Like taking the simplest part of the sample and not flipping it in a cool way. Like yeah, not they're not doing anything at all. Yeah. Like at all. And the craziest thing to me is when the artists don't even know who they're sampling. <laughs> like I was disappointed that Lotto didn't know that you know she was sampling Mariah Carey or. Mm. Callie also didn't know that she was sampling Ludacris. It's like, like, how do we even get to this point if y'all don't even know where it started? So, um, yeah, I do think that we need to get back to music education. Yeah. Because I had no desire to, like, learn or go back until VH1 would produce those I Heart the 80s, I Heart the 90s. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no data that proves that children don't have the attention spans for this type of content. <clears throat> It's just that they're not getting it. But, yeah, I think the exposing them to just the vast world of black music would help them be more inspired yeah. to kind of think outside of the box. Yeah. It, it, it's so funny to me how, like, I don't remember what year it was. But it was like niggas just started saying, like, attention spans are lower. And I think just enough people said it to where we ran with it. But I, I, I ain't never seen a pie chart. I ain't never seen There's no stats. There's no data that <laughs> never supports seen an this. Excel sheet. Like, niggas just said it. And we just, we just all believed, oh, yeah, attention spans are lower. There's like, no <laughs> data. Yo, literally on TikTok, you know, as a social media manager, I yeah. analyze trends. People are watching whole movies and episodes yeah. on TikTok, yeah. which means that there is a desire for it. Mm-hmm. The, the girl who spoke about her husband while she married, I didn't watch that shit because I don't got the attention span for that shit. Mm-hmm. And I'm not here for dumb bitches. Yeah. But people watched it. Yeah. You know, there's no data that proves that they don't have the attention span. Everybody was tapped into mm-hmm. the Kendrick and Drake beef. Yeah. All five minutes of the song, all mm-hmm. six minutes of each record, like there's no data. Yeah, if 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 the content is good, if a lot of people are talking about it, Period. if it's informative, there's so many different ways that you can get someone to watch a eight minute video. Yes, a two hour video. Agreed. Like, so yeah, it's it, it's just always so funny to me that we ran with that. I'm just like, 
I don't remember when it started, but niggas just started jacking that shit. I'm like, yeah, like who said that? <laughs> I, I do not know. <laughs> like, I do not know. But like, it changed music where people. niggas are making minute fifty seven uh, second songs, like, and then posting a the chopped and screwed version yeah, on like a little like, compilation album yo, and the slow version. It's... I'm just like, hold on, <laughs> what happened? How do we get here? But, no, for real. Um, yeah, I agree. How about how about you, Will? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, because. For a while, bro, kids and young producers, they weren't sampling at all. Mm, like, yeah. it kind of just came back. I just feel like... Very true. I feel like they just people just kind of learning how to even, like, do it. But there is there is right ways and wrong ways to do it. Like, you know, Kanye, Jay Dilla, like, shit like that. Like, I'm from the Midwest. I get it. Like, that shit... I love sampling. So, when it's done right, it's like... Psh, but when it's done terrible, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, when it's like... When you get when you see songs and it's like ten producers on it and it's like that's like a bunch of new wave shit where everybody's like using like loops and not chopping stuff they're not they're not doing they're not doing the sample justice yeah and that's kind of what's happening a lot now like the samples are not getting done justice and when that happens nobody wants to listen to that shit like and if they do want to listen to it it's very it's very cookie cutter yeah. mm-hmm. um, it's very cookie cutter I think it's really interesting. I don't know if you guys listened or saw it, but um, Tyler dropped his first song for his uh, dropped a single for his first uh, yeah for the the, the thing coming oh, his new that. album coming. Yeah, I'm just interested because to me, like when Tyler drops, it's you can see where everybody's like, oh, like this is real music is back, real hip hop <laughs> is back. Yeah. So I yeah I, I would I'd be interested to hear y'all takes on 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 Tyler. Just I guess his place in music but like even that even that like it, to me kind of feels like he's like the last one holding the torch yeah. for like real music or real hip hop music and like the sounds he's using and 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 everything you know yeah, yeah. So. Kendrick trying to do it too mm-hmm. I mean mm-hmm. Tyler he's a peculiar messenger but mm-hmm. somebody's got to do it yeah I mean <laughs> him even like even the cover like him wearing the mask and like everything is very his world building, his world building has always been amazing. For sure, but like now, I feel like it's um, uh, like the world has been built. Like he has, his, like the world has been built. Like now, it's like maybe he's like building the universe. Like yeah. I don't, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. I haven't, I haven't checked the singles out yet. So yeah, I, I need to. I need to get yeah, he dropped a video with it too, and people are saying like, oh, he um, the video is uh, it paid homage to Kanye Runaway the movie because he's doing like the same thing, mm. running the street, driving a Ferrari. It was cool. Yeah. It had uh, it had the, the the black girl from the Bear Ao. I don't know how to say her last name, but she's in the music video. Mm. It's cool. It's cool. Damn, we need one on System Park back because that would have been a moment. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was it was very it was very like cool. Like, it was like yeah, they sweeping the Emmys with that show and she's starring in music mm-hmm. video. Like that would have been a moment mm-hmm. if this was like 10, 15 years mm-hmm. ago. <laughs> one on Six and Park BT. We'll, we'll we'll get to that later. Right. We'll, we'll get to BT later, but I I have thoughts as well. Um. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, I I know all of these comments like these from older artists don't get received well. I saw one Twitter, one tweet where a nigga was like, "Dr. Dre, you was influenced by this person, and you was doing cosplay of this person, and all that." And it's like, well, I think two things can exist. I think, I think you can be inspired by something, make it your own, but then also have critiques on what's come after you. Like, I don't think Dr. Dre was acting like. Well, actually, the he, he quite literally said like in in our time, like we were doing it better. We were real musicians, so he kind of took a a high moral type he stance on it. But it was like, in, you know, in a way, like he was spitting. Like for, for that time, the music he was making was golden. Currently, I don't really want to hear what he was making back then. Now, like I like what's happening now. I like the music I like now. So it's all just a general generational um type thing. So I don't. Like stuff like that doesn't bother me because there's things about it that I agree with and things I'm just like, eh, whatever. I don't really give a fuck. Like so, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's what that was. Uh, Tommy Richmond. We didn't really get to talk about him much on the show. We did speak about him. We went on Need to Know. Shout out to Need to Know by the way for having us. That was, yes. that was a great time. Um, but so he's been caught up in some controversy the last few weeks. Uh, I believe it was DJ Head. Um, who if you. <laughs> H E D. Are you mad at Matriff? I mean, <laughs> nah, I wasn't even laughing at his name. I'm just laughing at him because he's really been in 
he's been in the news cycle since this beef. I had no idea who Bruh. he was. Yeah, before I before this. I, I found and out now about I, him. Now I know like DJ Head all the time. Yeah. I found out about him a few name years ago because he he got a gig with like TMZ Hip Hop. They they like launched their hip hop mm. uh, thing, and he was like the face of it. So I I got familiar with him then, but I I didn't know much about him. And then this beef pops up, and he's one one he's, of the voices of the West Coast. He's like everywhere. Yeah, bro. and like launched the the bigger picture show with Elliot Wilson and Jeremy Heck. Now mm-hmm. he's got his own radio show with Gina Views. Uh, Gina's cool, by the way. I met her in Cancun. Super cool. But um yeah, so DJ Head was I think he was gonna play wait wait what? You, <laughs> you met her where? In in Cancun. Oh, okay. What was y'all doing down? <laughs> we were there for at that the conference. Raisin Cane's yeah, at, the, oh, at the Raisin okay. Canes conference. Because okay. I was wondering hey. why they was cackle. I knew what you was talking about, hey. friend. Don't worry. Hold on. I knew what you was talking about, friend. Don't worry. Don't hey. worry. Hey. You know, you, you know, I usually make it very obvious if it's you know, right. Oh, if he was tending to, we would have known. Yeah. Okay. But um, <laughs> anyways, um, <laughs> my bad. So I'm like, she probably got it, man. Sorry, sis. Sorry. Let me apologize. She might. I don't. I don't know. We, we, we never really got that far. But um, so <laughs> DJ Head was going to play Tommy Richmond on his hip hop radio station. Now I don't remember the exact exchange because when I by the time I got there, Tommy had deleted his initial tweet. But Tommy basically said like, "I my music isn't hip hop." So then DJ Head was like, "Oh well, now I have an open open slot. So anyone who wants to submit some hip hop music, here it is." So then Tommy had to go back and like clarify to people he was like no disrespect to hip-hop but like i am i'm i I don't want to be boxed in as an artist okay that's like a very respectable thing i didn't look at you as a hip-hop artist either you you made a hip-hop leaning song in million dollar baby but i didn't look at you that way and so ever since then it's been like a whole conversation about it because people feel like while his sentiment is fair you kind of like you almost Denou- he, he's not denouncing hip hop, but he's like removing that label from him. But like, it's the hip hop fans who kind of made Million Dollar Baby as popular as it was. Like that that moment it had for those two months. Like I, I saw a lot of niggas. It was niggas like, yo, make that Million Dollar Baby shit fire. Like that shit fire. So it's just like they feel like it's kind of an oversight in the people that supported him for you to then be like, I'm more than a hip hop artist, or I'm, I'm not a hip hop artist. Like just that rejection which almost feels like too dramatic of a word i'm, I'm trying to think of the, the the right word to use I'm, I'm sure i get what i mean but yeah people were really frustrated by that this has happened so many times over the last couple of years the post malones the like all, all like Facts. like even Lil yada himself has been like i'm not a rapper i'm i'm, I'm an artist it's just like all right like it, it don't really bother me what, what people label themselves but like again two things c- can exist you can be an artist and make a hip hop record or a hip hop adjacent record. Like you can, like those two things can coexist. And so I get why people were kind of frustrated by it, but it, it didn't do much for me. And also he's white. So like, That's you know, like, like if, if you're not rapping in a traditional sense, I, I'm, I'm not really looking at you as a hip hop artist anyways. And then I heard his album, like that shit is very eclectic funk rock alternative soul type just a, a mix of a mix of shit so i'm just like yeah, yeah you're I, not yeah duh. yeah <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know <laughs> but then this past week we saw that million dollar baby is being submitted for the hip-hop categories at the grammys which again I, people are very like they're in an uproar about it but i'm just like he made a hip hop leaning song. Like Mm-mm. I'm sure he's, I'm sure he's aspiring for the overall categories, the, 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 the top four joints, like song of the year, record of the year, whatever. Um, I, maybe they thought of like trying for the R and B or the pop categories, but they like, I like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like the only thing that's been reported is that they're submitting for the hip hop categories, which doesn't shock me. But people are very angry about it. So Yeah, he said he's not a hip hop artist, so what are you doing? I mean, that's really <sighs> He literally said that, he's not a hip hop artist, I so know. why are you submitting yourself but for that, a hip hop category? That's that's the publisher and the label, because niggas got jobs to lose <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> shit to win. Like that's not really Tommy. Like Tommy's probably in there fighting, like, yo, don't submit that shit. Mm-hmm. And the publishers are like, yo, 
We literally have to, my nigga. Yeah. Like, like we have to. This was a number one we song. We have to. <laughs> it was a like, number one song. Are you true. crazy? People will lose their jobs in here if we do, like yeah. if, if if shit's not if we're not doing this right. Like the fact that he left off those songs off the album is insane anyways. Mm-hmm. Like you left those songs off the album. Yeah. And 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 and, and you thought you was about to I guess prove a point like my music's so good, I don't need those songs. That's exactly that didn't happen, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, he, and so well, it's like So now he's like, like, all right, let me lean on the black people. Yeah, it's yeah. like the, the publishers is like, bro, you had your you had your 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 moment mm-hmm. now or like publishers. We did labor. it your way. Yeah. Now we've got to do it our way. Yeah. Like it's just like Which yeah. It, that's it's possible. Just, yeah, yeah. I mean a, Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very accurate scenario. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot of it's a lot of it's a lot of money involved you know what i'm saying like it's like this is like it's like a big it's a big decision especially yeah one like one of the biggest songs like this year um mm-hmm. why not try to win a grammy for it i guess kendrick I was... gonna win it yeah i mean kendrick is gonna win it yeah, yeah. of course so do do to, to you because you said like he's not a hip-hop artist can non-hip-hop artists make hip-hop music can non-hip-hop artists make hip-hop music mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so that's our thought exercise for the day. Right? I'm like, can a non-hip hop Like, artist... for example, and I, I don't know if this is the best example because he's rooted in both, but, like, I view Bryson Tiller as an R&B artist, but he be rapping on songs. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, there are some songs where his, his feature verse, he's just, he's just rapping. Right. So... Or um the song uh the song you put out recently before the album uh whatever she want. Yeah, yeah yeah well whatever she want that's even though he kind of so there's melody on it like to me that's more of a hip hop song so I'm just like if Bryson made a hip hop song it wouldn't to me it'd be like okay I view him as an R and B artist but he's making a rap type record so I I don't know I feel like especially in this era because everyone tries to do everything right it's it makes sense to me. Like, I, I don't love it, but I don't really care that much. But it's like Tommy Richmond, not a hip hop artist, but Million Dollar Baby had that hip hop appeal. It was, was all over hip hop radio. So it makes sense to be submitted for the hip hop category. He set himself up because he's not going to win. <laughs> but I don't know. This is it's like not a big deal to me, I guess. I don't know. I'm going to think about the answer to that question. Mm-hmm. But he's white. <laughs> <laughs> like the politics behind that like mm-hmm. you know you saying you're not a hip hop artist and then yeah. submitting yourself for a hip hop category like if not like us didn't come out he probably would have won so it's like that that is not okay mm-hmm. does, does, does the Grammys have like Breakthrough artist categories and stuff like right. that. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm think I'm trying to think yeah. now because like, there's no way shit. There's, there's only, no way he only there's... submitted one thing like the, for like I just I don't know. There's the best new artist category, but that's mm. like it. No, we need a we need a refresh. They should the, they they <laughs> like should so. have more yeah. things catered to to newer acts. Like yeah. the fact there's only one best new artist category is pretty nuts. Like I, I believe last year Ice Spice was nominated for that. Mm. Uh was was it was that Glor- Glorilla's year too or someone else? But um yeah, I I'm I'm actually surprised they haven't added more stuff geared towards like newer acts, but Yeah, I'm just Damn, interested. when you said Ice Spice just now, I was just like, damn. Yeah. What a <laughs> That was just like a little figment in our little imagination at this point. Look how they massacred my girl, man. Now she massacred herself. Yeah, oh sure. Come to find out. Mm. Everybody ate. Oh my god. <laughs> that song's funny too. Funny as fuck, cause that shit really killed her. Mm. And then she came out with the black fro. Mm. Oh my god. That shit was the nail in the coffin, man. She's she's in a very interesting place, but she need a hit. Glow Rilla make it solo. Glow Glow Rilla too also is like it's like not saying like that like they had beef or anything, but it was just like the like the black wig shit. But then Glow album being so good Mm -hmm. as like a you know a woman artist like and and especially like Lotto's project too was good. The Southern girls are taking it. Period. Like Cardi, where you at, sister? No pressure, because I know how you feel about that. No pressure. But yeah, like we going. need something out here on the East Coast, man. Like the 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 Southern girls got it, and 
I know they want to leave JT out the conversation. No, she had a really good album this year, too. No, I mean the album. stand pages Big because album. she's like alienated herself because of her alliance with Nikki, and mm. then her and Glorilla supposedly had a physical altercation mm. at the mm. VMAs, I think, whatever Ooh. award show it was, that they had a physical Ooh. altercation. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah she was that's about Chincha right there. She was dissing Bochincha. her on the album. Uh, yeah. Glow was dissing her on the album. Like, they guess. were dissing each other. Yeah. JT says she's being hated on by a bitch with a man voice. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my. The, the, we background, the background guys are funny today. Not <laughs> very <laughs> funny. Not, no, not very that's mindful. Not, that's not. Very not. No. That's not. And then, like, Glow recently liked JT's picture. Mm. So I was just like, all right, you know, maybe there's hope for reconciliation. But mm. JT's a Sag. So I don't know if y'all know much about Sagittarius I people. Do not. You, you've taught us so much about astrology. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what? So like, what do they be on? Like, they just... they're Sagittarists. Yeah, they're Sagittarists. I've, Brutally honest. I've dated them. I'm close friends with them. I, I can attest to. It. Yeah. If you're not on on their good side, you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Nikki's a Sag. Holmes oh. a Sag. Oh, okay. Yeah. What so. month? What month is that? December. Yeah, it's like uh like, end of November. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, um JT had a good album. Um uh, Mona Leo, her project was cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but you know, the New York in me, I don't give a fuck if it sounds biased or not. But, you know, I could, you know, go for a little bit more lyricism in these I'm projects. I'm yeah. Better. You know, like like that's why I, I like Lotto's project out of everyone's. She she's to me she's the best rapper of like if we're talking she Lotto, is. Glorilla, JT, Lotto's the best rapper. Yeah, I think Glorilla's making the best songs right now. Yes, for sure though. But it's definitely like nursery rhymey. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean that's what I expect though. I'm not mm -hmm. expecting no crazy shit from her. She's got but... a really hard dope delivery over like really great beats. Beat select yeah, yeah the beat selection is crazy. Elite. Yeah, but yeah. And I, I expected more from that collab with her and Sexy Red. But that oh, goes the... into the lazy sampling that Will said. I actually really like that. I'm not going to lie. I, I liked really it. Liked it yeah. But like. The sample was like, yeah. That, that's like a perfect example. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like a perfect example. I, I <clears throat> like expected more for this mm. like link up. Like this highly anticipated link up. It was yeah. just like, hmm, I'm okay. I'm not mad at that at all. Yeah. I'm not mad at that. Um, but um, yeah. Yeah. Um. What's, what's what's the girl we, we, we played her a couple weeks ago? The the one who we thought sounded like Ice Spice. <laughs> what was her name? Sex um, Sandy or something like that. Or uh, I I already forgot, I forgot her name. I forgot too. It's like <laughs> so stun. It was stun as Sandy. Oh yeah 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 yeah. She she, 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 she next up. <laughs> yeah. She, she next up. We're about to call her. I don't know. Like uh, uh, I'm trying to think of a, a flip on Ice Spice's name. Cold cold seasoning. <laughs> <laughs> cold seasoning. Oh <laughs> she up next. Cold Yo. cut. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, lastly on this chat, my, my boy Wanna, Gonna Wanna, new track, Him All Along, uh, released. How do we feel about Him All Along? He could have kept that. Damn. Wow. Oh, wow. That shit is hard to okay. me. Okay. That shit is fire. It sounds like everything he puts out. Nah. You, you are consistent and you feel like Gunna doesn't, sh like he puts out the same type It of sounds stuff. like the same shit all the time. Like. I mean... I, I won't disagree, <laughs> but there's like the the same shit where it's like I would agree he could have kept that, or the same shit where I'm like, it's getting this elevated. hasn't stopped being fire to me. Yeah, it's like, getting, yeah, it's like it's like it's like it's like the same shit, but it's elevated. Same shit. Y'all part of the problem. <laughs> that's why we at. That's why we here. Where we at, man? You can't be complaining about the state of the culture and then gassing shit up like this. Like, well, see, is it Uchi Wally or is it One Mike? It's certain people who can do the mm -mm. same type thing. Mm -mm. like it says this is gunner and turbo like you get gunner and turbo link up the shit always fire and and it, it's his signature style too it, it's that it's that that flow he has with the little inflections at the end yeah like, that's what i'm here you know, all that like and and i don't know for me i think I, I I'm excited to hear him like you know when he first came out gift and the curse it was a very somber type album very somber very reflective and now he's like He's talking to shit again. He's confident, like all that. Like, so even if it sounds the same, the messaging is a little different. So there's more like thought being put into 
what he's saying as opposed to how it's said which I, was, I can appreciate i was just thinking about that album like a few days ago like mm-hmm. how hot like fuck you mean and like all that Bruh. shit was like when it first like when it came yeah. out and it's kind of crazy how long was it like two years ago that was two? Or three. june 2023 no, last year. No, last year. Fuck you, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, June she, 2020. Bro, you see how year. fast? He said two years. I'm see, like, I'm wait. tweaking. I'm tweaking. <laughs> but no, you see. No, because it does feel like a while ago. But, like, that's what I'm saying. You see how fast you can get cold or, like, not be. Yeah. That sucks. It sucks. Like, it's hard. And I don't bro. help. It's yeah. hard as fuck. Like, I just, yeah, it's like, damn. Like, he, he's been doing it smart, though. Like, he's, he's, he's pretty much been, like, nonstop touring since then. Mm-hmm. And he put out the other album, which kind of came and went for me. Like, it's just got yeah. a couple bangers on it, like one of one. Mm-hmm. That one's pretty popular. Um, but he's 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 been on tour. He's still on tour now. He's performing tonight, like at uh, somewhere in New York. I forget where. It's Paramount. Um, oh, it's Paramount. Oh yeah, it's Paramount. You're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah. like That's so. Crazy. He's he he stayed on the road, connected with his fans. Like so, he's 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 staying hot, even if, um, you know, like fuck you mean isn't what it was. But still, you you hear that out, like you hear it at in a in an arena. The shit lit. Right. Um. We were actually talking about that in, in in one of my group chats the other day. We were like, "Yo, like, what's well, what's the last hit like before like not like us and like that?" And I was like, "I guess first person shooter." And they're like, "Fuck you mean?" I was like, "Damn, if not, nah, it is. Yeah. If fuck you mean is the last hit before this this beef, then damn, like, yeah, that's wh- why we need to stop gassing up the little singles. <laughs> we got like, we nope, nope, nope. Uh, where yeah. the hits at? I mean, granted, like, I'm 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 not out here putting the hit label." on on just anything like that's i'm 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 very ju- judicious with that i remember when like flo millie dropped uh tell me you ain't never gonna lose me and, I, and like i heard it i was like it, it was new like it hadn't popped off and like got on tiktok i was like yo this has like the makings of a hit like mm-hmm. this like i was like i i, I hope this does it because a lot of shit that you will say oh that could be right that should be and whether it's promo whether it's for whatever reason shit just don't pop off so it was really satisfying to see Flo Millie have that moment having the Bryson remix having the all girls remix like the shit kind of even w- w- with TikTok it felt like the world really fucked with it because there's stuff that'll get manufactured into being a hit but you go outside you you might not even hear it mm-hmm. exactly. like it's only a TikTok banger or exactly. it's only a, a IG story banger mm-hmm. but like Never Lose Me had real motion like yeah. outside Fuck You Mean was the same thing first person shooter not 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 not, not really like that for like the fans yeah like yeah um and it was it was it was kind of an inevitable number one i guess drake and cole on the same song it was it was kind of an inevitable one but. i'm trying to think if there was one even between them because typically summer we usually get like an afro beats bop well, 2023 what what was what would have been what were the bangers last year was was there a burner boy joke i don't think taliban was, 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 was taliban it was year? taliban yeah, yeah. Was it was taliban yeah. that went for a little bit and then something else happened Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Andre, um, I don't know. Maybe it was when did Tal- maybe it was Taliban's and then it was Fuck You Mean or was it? It's for Fuck You Mean dropped in like June. When did Taliban come out? Ta- Taliban's I think was like, I mean like a July thing. That that, that was like middle of the summer towards the end of the summer. Uh, Lotto and um, fucking Talibans. Cardi have put it on the floor too. That that actually that was a hit. That yeah, that, that was that a hit. Motion. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, motion. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that bitches was going to the club with plastic bags. <laughs> Rip me out the plastic, been acting <laughs> right through, you dig? Um, but yeah, it's it's crazy. Like well, one summer ago, we're struggling to really remember what the what the records were. Moments Wait, are... I spiced it. I spiced oh yeah, song. yeah. She had Delhi. Moments are just so short lived now. That's yeah. the thing. Like, they're yeah. so short lived, and it's I, I don't I, and I, I don't know if that's because we have so many artists and like so many streaming and so many different fan bases now, but like I feel like like moments happen and then like unless you're big enough, you don't get pushed out. But like if you're like a the artist all we just named, you're getting pushed out for the next moment every time. Mm-hmm. Like unless you're like a Kendrick or like a Nikki yeah. or something like that. It's just like moments are super short lived now. That's kind of tough. Yeah. I remember niggas tried to tell me Pound Town was the song this summer last summer. I was I was, I, I, I personally was not jacking it. I wasn't. You know how I feel. I wasn't. <laughs> but we know. We <laughs> I expected people to be to be mad in the comments at you, but it was it was whatever. Um They could be mad. No, I, well, I, I know. I know that, that See, I, didn't, ain't changed I, I didn't like Pound Town, but then when I heard her album, I was like, damn, she's gonna be here for a little bit. Her album was kinda fire. Bro. I did like Nikki's verse on the remix. Bro. The, the Nikki, the, she had a few remixes last year where she was smoking them. The uh, yeah. the Princess Diana, that yeah. joint. She jumped on um, 
something else. It's not this meal. I'll probably remember it at some point, but yeah, man. Um, t- one year later, we can't remember what the songs of the summer in twenty twenty. No, like. I literally would have to do like a quick <laughs> search, like right now, because I can't. Yeah, like, sorry. It's tough. I remember. I, I I I felt really good going to this summer. It actually felt like we had a a lot of strong options. Then a good amount of them like stayed around. Like of course the 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 Fishers, the Get It Sexies, the Yeah Glows, uh, Million Dollar Baby. Towards the middle, kind of tailed off a little bit, and then we got like Don Cash, Charlie Wilson, Attitude. Um, I'm surprised like how us, big that of song course, is. Like, not dude. like that. What do you say? I said I'm surprised. My bad. I'm surprised how big that Don song, or that Don uh, Charlie and Cash song actually got. It was, it was people yeah, like that. Undeniable. Uh, Charlie was my best, my favorite part. Yeah, everybody yeah, likes Charlie part for real. Like mm-hmm. everybody yeah. likes Charlie part. Yeah, we actually had a really good crop a real of musician. Shit Hello. Summer. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, that's that. So let's quickly get into. It's lunch break. It is a great time to be in New York or New York adjacent. The New York Liberty won their first WNBA championship in their 28-year existence. Uh, great series. The vibes in Barclays were incredible to see. Um, really good games. That last game was pretty sloppy. Like it was, it was, it was nuts. <laughs> they were, they was cooking them on the on the timeline. But that's how you know the WNBA really made it. Because this nigga's taking a time out they day to slander it. Like, mm-hmm. like yeah. d- during NFL no, Sunday real shit. Real shit. with baseball on, niggas are dedicating their time What's to that? slandering the WNBA. Shit. Y'all are here. Go so girls. salute to y'all for doing y'all that. Did it. Um and I'm not gonna front I, I genuinely like started tearing up like when like the clock hit zero and I, I the, it ran out on there and presented the trophies like bro I was, I was sitting over there because t- you know, like I, I've, I've been going to the games. Like I've, I've really been like connected with the team, locked in. I saw them make it to the finals last year and lose. So mm. for them, them to make it this year, go to the final game of the series, like winner take all, and it need, require overtime. Like it was an emotional roller coaster, man. You I'm, saw Ellie the elephant on yo, the floor. Ellie was lit. <laughs> Spike Lee, like they was out there. Yo, it was, it was real. I, I, I really wish I was in the building, but it was mm. just like, yeah. Sunday is sports day for me. I gotta watch football. Got to watch baseball. I got to watch um, uh, WNBA. NBA is coming this week. So it's just like, good Lord. You busy. You booked and busy. Sundays are my day. Forced relaxation. I'm inside watching sports. This is the best time to be a man. Right Absolutely. Now. Like to be a man if you're a man. Absolutely. This These next, these next, what do you say, like four to five months? Yeah, man. It's special to be a man. Yeah. Right now. You can go ruin this nigga day right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you can try. <laughs> Let me ruin this nigga you day can try. right now. He's going to be like, it's cool. Yeah. The NBA starting tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, what you talking about? Like, if if it, if if you want to be mad at me, I'm going to just be like, you know what? Talk, text me when you want. I'm going to turn my three screens on Not three watching screens. sports. Especially if three your team's screens. good right now or like if you're like a Yankee fan or Woo! some shit. I was just I about to get there. Had, I, I almost just, nobody can tell us. Nobody can tell us shit. About to get there. The New York Jets can't steal my joy with their <laughs> with their awful football play because I am a champion. I, I got a Liberty ring right mm. here. And I'm about to have a New York Yankees ring right here. We for the first time in 15 years. This 15 crazy, long bro. years. In 15 years ago, 2009, I had hair. Yeah. I, I was slim. Yeah. I, I think I was a I was my uh I was in eighth or ninth grade at the time. Like just so so much. Different shit going on. I couldn't drive at the time. All that. That's the last time we were in the fucking World Series. Not not one in it. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! It's been a long fifteen Whoa. years. I, I think my uncle that. came from Panama for that shit. Long, Low key. like it's long fifteen years. We had disappointment after disappointment, losing series to the Astros, the Red Sox, making it to the ALCs, losing like just all this bullshit that we had to go through. But oh, thank you, thanks to. <laughs> John Carlos Stanton, Juan mm. Juan Soto, pe- pay him whatever the fuck he wants. Get give him, get you could give him like, I, w- 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 I don't even know what to say. I'm I'm just so like he can have like whatever he wants, man. When my son's name <laughs> is 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 Juan Juan <laughs> Cody Sadler. Cody? Juan, Juan, Juan Cody. Cody is for Cody Rhodes. Mm. Okay, so, okay. So Cody okay, Rhodes. I see you what you did. You don't, you don't, you, you're not tapping it with the WWE, but like, <laughs> and the good thing is I'll probably even marry a, uh, you know, a nice little Latina woman, so it's going to work out. Like, Juan Cody Sadler, I, I just got to find like one like black black name, maybe, maybe like 
like to do like the put a little hyphen there, like Juan Cody. D- I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I mean, bro. I mean, bro. I'm naming <laughs> my first son uh, John Carlos. Hey man, John Carlos Foster. That's I, your fire. My son is gonna be named Bryson. Okay. <laughs> there we go. There mm-hmm. we go. That's cool. <laughs> but, That's cool. Yeah, man. It's it's a great time to be a New York New York adjacent sports fan. Um, aside from the, the the football teams, we're not going to talk about them. Basketball starting soon. Mm. Uh, Knicks fans have a lot to be excited about. Nets fans, God be with you. Um, but yeah, man. Yeah, super exciting. No, it's it's. I I can't lie to you that the, Soto's at bat is the greatest at bat I've ever oh seen my in my God, life. Bruh. And when he hit that home run, you could in my apartment complex, you could hear like. Everybody's apartment screamed. It was like it was I love nuts. Like that. I yeah, was man. like, "Whoa!" Like this is like some real. I feel like the whole world was watching. Yes, like that's that's the great. I feel like baseball playoffs. It's different, bro. Are sneakily, the best. the best playoffs of basketball of NFL because I feel like baseball is such an easy sport to watch. Like my my mom to this day still don't understand football, but but she understands baseball. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you hit the ball, you run around bases. Mm-hmm. Like yep. you you catch the ball, they're mm-hmm. out. Like mm-hmm. it's pretty it's it's pretty easy to pick up on. And so I'm seeing all these people tweeting about baseball now. I'm just like that's that's great. I love I love the energy on the timeline, the arguments, the excitement, all that. You know, hometown pride, all that. Like it's just it's 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 good vibes. It's real good vibes. So special. Yeah, special man, it's um it's great. I I'm. Gonna try to make it to a game. These tickets is looking fucking crazy. It's Yankees, Dodgers. The, the, and it's so, so crazy it worked out this way. I think the MLB has wanted this for a while. These are like the two premier teams on each coast, both MVPs. Like you got Mr. 50 50 versus Mr. 60 plus home mm, runs. It's about to be biblical, bro. It's, 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 <laughs> this is like, this is a, as, as someone who grew up a baseball player, like this is like the dream series. Like, the, like, this is like if, Braun and Kobe were able to face off in the finals. Like oh, wow. it's 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 like that. It's a moment. It's like that. You better get a media pass. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna see. I'm gonna see, <laughs> but no. the vibes are high. So shout out to baseball, WNBA, for not stealing my joy like the NFL is trying to. <laughs> NBA will be back soon this week, so can't wait for that. FanDuel, I'm on your ass. Oh yeah, oh, Jesus Sing that. Sing that. I'm on oh, your Jesus ass. Christ. Sing that. It's crazy. It was just like four months ago. We we uh, put that parlay together on yep. the show. You got better. Uh, um, I'm, I'm, well, I, I'm I'm good with NFL All right, basketball. Good. I've I've got some people I rely on. All like, right. we, we gonna we, we, I promise we we gonna make some bread. She needs right. to get, she Don't needs, make no promises. She needs to get in the Discord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just jump in the Discord. <laughs> jump in the Discord. <laughs> jump in the Discord. I got you. But oh my goodness, <clears throat> that's our lunch break. Let's jump into our word of the week before our main event. So our word of the week this week is pejorative. Say it with me. Pejorative. Pejorative. Mm-hmm. So it's an adjective uh, that means expressing contempt or disapproval. Or it is a noun that refers to a word that is expressing contempt or disapproval. I will give you an example. Um, now, normally, if I said that thing is stupid, it would be a pejorative. But I actually mean it in a good way this time. Like, yo, her booty is stupid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so it pretty yo. much re- refers to words that have a negative connotation or definition. But like. You you could flip them into a positive. You just have to make that clear. Stupid would be normally a pejorative. I'm calling you dumb. I'm calling you not intelligent. So pejorative. Yeah, okay. it, it refers to all negative, negative comments, negative words with a negative. So you can flip it. I can flip it like, woo, that Soto hit was pejorative. Like it was stupid. Like it was like a. Well, it was or I can't flip. Pejorative it like that. describes the word stupid. Mm, yeah. See, I'm not okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hold on, I don't yeah, get. Yeah, see, it's a, it's, a, it's a lot going on right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, I'm like, I might have said too much. To no, that, I, that, I messed that, up. That, that I... made it confusing. So, yeah, the the word pejorative describes it, it's uh, it. So, actually, it, it's an adjective. Yeah. So you kind of could say that, like that right. hit was pejorative. Okay. But it, it's it, not it, would, it would just be a little weird. Weird. Yeah, because yeah, it's be kind a little of weird. Like yeah. t- typically, the way I use it is yeah. like you wouldn't use it like that. How I used it. I'll like I'll like say a word like yo, um fuck. What? I'm trying to think of like a ne- negative, negative word. See, look, we're, we're all learning here. This this is what word of the week is for. You feel me? Because I'm here like hold on. Yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. Shit, yeah. Um, oh, 
That's the shit. But I'm not using shit as, as a, a pejorative. pejorative. All right, that one was Which more will make clear. it clear to you, oh, he's saying that's the shit. In a good way. It's positive. That's like Michael Jackson bad. Mm -hmm. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. You're not okay, using okay. bad as a pejorative. Mm -hmm. Yo, she bad as fuck. Mm -hmm. Because you could say she's bad as if she's badly behaved or she bad as if I, I need that. Yeah. So I'm Hashtag saying bad, but not as a pejorative. <laughs> that lets you guys know I'm saying she's attractive. Fair okay, enough. okay. You there? Okay. Yes, we yeah. Do you do you use large words when you're in disagreements with your lady friends? Um, yes, I I do actually. I do. That that tweet made me think of you. I'm I, like, I, I can see Armand doing that. I do, I do. <laughs> I, I I was looking up something the other day, and I stumbled upon some old texts, and I was like, damn, I I snapped. Like, like <laughs> yo, you get me mad to the point where like, because you know how when like you're romantically involved with someone, and then yeah, y'all are having like a really bad argument. You end up talking to them like y'all are doing like a, a business transaction. HR, together. It's just HR mad professional. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, well, <laughs> she got into it with the wrong motherfucker because. <laughs> well, actually, and that wasn't a pejorative. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh -huh. Ooh, you, you see what I did? <laughs> I'm learning. Be snap, I'm learning. Be snap. Be snap. But <laughs> yeah, you know, so, so sometimes you got to do that. Like, and I, it's very fun. It's you cook there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't got to get into it, but yeah, I, I, I did that. I did that. What we do got to get into is this week's board meeting. <sighs> the recipes. The recipes are lost. They are they, like, and, you know, things are meant to change. Mm -hmm. Everything is meant to change. When we were young, we was in the crib talking on the house phone. And and then we got cell phones, <laughs> and then we got cell phones with cameras, and then and then we got you know iPhones, and the iPhone had the home button, and then and then we you know it was the the little uh t -t -f fingerprint ID, mm -hmm. and then it was Face ID. You know what I'm saying? Like ev everything is meant to change. Some things change for the better. Some things change for the worse. I just vividly remember it was like 2005 to like 2010. My family and I would gather to watch the BET Award shows, 100%. the BET Awards, BET Hip Hop Awards. Moments would happen. Celebrities would actually attend these things. <laughs> Awards would actually be given out on the shows. I, I stopped really watching or caring for them, like, towards the end of high school, in college. I, I, the, sometimes the only reason I would watch the BET Awards is because, like, they always happen around my birthday. Like, they're always at the end, at the end of June. And so, I don't know, sometimes for nostalgia purposes or now because I have to cover it for work. Like, I don't have a choice. But I stopped really caring for the BT Awards, BT Hip Hop Awards towards the end of high school. College, I wouldn't really watch them much. Uh, maybe I catch clips online. Uh, but now, again, now the, the work I do, I have to watch them. And the difference in quality, the difference in care, the, the difference in who goes, it, it is bad. These past BET Hip Hop Awards, the 2024 BET Hip Hop Awards, first they had them in a, in a nightclub, Dre's nightclub in, Nos, in Las Vegas. Yeah. We, weird, weird choice. Like, I, I think I get what they were trying to go for, but it, it, especially if they're not giving out awards the actual show, but it, it just didn't really work for me. It, just, it didn't really work. I'm, I mean, I know the company is in a transitional period right now. Mm -hmm. um, I was impacted by it, you know, Paramount Global was sold to, I think, Skydance, mm -hmm. I think was mm -hmm. the name. Interesting. So, like, they're in that period right now. Like, they let go the entire social team. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of people got fired. They're not even doing full-time contractors anymore. It's only part-time. Um, so, I know that that probably played a part into the lackluster show. But, um, you know, I'm going to defend BET a little bit and just say that the award show is always a representation of where music is for sure. today. For sure. Because, yeah, people complain about how the award show was whack and whatnot, but mm. they have everything that niggas claim they like. Mm. The sexy reds, the Gloverilla. Mm -hmm. You know, they have everything that everyone claimed they like. It's just all yeah. the TikTok-y stuff. That, like, this is what is currently happening. And to be honest with you, 
I'm happy they didn't do the ciphers mm. because even like, you know, there aren't many people who can freestyle or even come prepared with one. So it's like, it's an accurate representation. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm glad you, you, you know, made that clarification because I, in my rant, in my, in my anger, I wasn't going to put the blame solely on BET. I, I do give, some of the the blame to the artists as well like the award show is only as good as who's willing to show up and so when i'm not expecting the super a-list people to be there but they used to be they did but they exactly so it's just like (laughs) the the difference now and it's similar like you know the a-list people aren't doing journalism anymore like they there's so many things that they used to do that they're not doing and you know it's like it's cool that they have ways that they can promote themselves or tell those story their stories without the traditional things but for the viewer experience for something that's been going on for so long that's kind of been part of me growing up i remember lil wayne freestyling at the bt hip-hop awards about sarah palin like like I'll, I'll never forget i think i know that shit word for word like i i just remember these certain moments i thought she was about to spit it i thought, thought about it but not, not <laughs> now but like but I, I i just remember these moments but it was like these moments came because these people were in these just huge significant points of their careers and they wanted to be everywhere. They wanted to show, they wanted that access. Like they wanted to create those moments for, yes. for fans and not just on their own terms, on their tours and all that, but like at award shows. And then again, Lil Wayne at, at, at that same award show, I think he won every single hip hop award. So like him being there holding all them trophies, like that's, that's a, that's a big thing for them. So again, when you're not giving out awards, I don't. I don't need to perform at the BT Hip Awards. Like I, I, I get an artist viewing it that way, but it, it just, it sucks. So, uh, my thing too is, wh- I guess they always been separated. But like, what's the, what's the difference between the BET Awards and the BT Hip Hop Awards, other than like the hip hop aspect? So the BT Awards, like you know, because they... yeah, I mean, as an artist, if I went to one, I mean, I, that's what happened to us too. Like, mm-hmm. the cat, they was like, "Yo, Cash, you want to?" Like, no, I went to the. I went to the <laughs> BET Awards. I, yeah. I don't want to go to this. Like, yeah. And so, I, yeah, I just think that's kind of an issue. My w- one of my boys gave like the perfect kind of um, perfect uh, analogy for it. And you guys aren't wrestling fans, but I, I think you'd understand. The BET Awards is like WrestleMania, like the, the biggest event of the year. Mm-hmm. Right. They they cover hip hop, R and B, sports, film, entertainment. Like it, it's all encompassing. Oh. It's truly black entertainment. BT Hip Hop Awards gives hip hop its own night, and mm-hmm. they they get individual awards for best new artist, best video, best best duo group, you know, best best verse, best all this stuff. So it's mm-hmm. like a night dedicated to hip hop because yeah, there's black entertainment, but a huge kind of foundation of black entertainment, and what really I think pushed BET to the level it is is hip hop. So yeah. you know, it's cool that they give hip hop its own night, and rappers like you know like gave big moments as a result of that like getting their own individual type night so that i I think it's just kind of like honoring hip-hop on its own and then honoring entertainment at at large no i mean the beat the the hip-hop awards definitely used to have huge moments Mm -hmm. like wasn't the good music cypher from that like yeah yeah, it's like you know i guess like yeah bro things just change and maybe damn because you're right we did they did give everything that people say they like Mm -hmm. but it was all there. So maybe people don't like it that much. Like I don't yeah, it's like this is like a more reflection, I feel like, on consumers. Yeah. It ain't yeah. the artist. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. that's why I be yeah. here it's on some like don't say that gonna mm-hmm. song is hot and it ain't a hit. <laughs> that's why I'm saying that's why we got here. Yeah. Like, but real talk though, like as funny as that was, that's why we got here. We're not like we're on some like, all oh, right, it's cool. Shit can't be cool no mm. more. Like if you look at the charts in the early two thousands or even just in the 2010s and compared to now like there were multiple hip hop tracks on the damn chart and yeah. now it's like nah or even when you look at bodies of work like from the past it's like damn you had all of these bangers on one ass project mm-hmm. it's just shit not hitting yo it's yeah. not hitting yeah it's 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 an interesting relationship cuz the, the consumer definitely determines what the provider gives you but the provider can also condition the consumer to want something like I, I I remember it was it was I was super young. My my dad just put the BT Hip Hop Awards on, so I came in not really knowing what I was looking for. I saw what they gave us: ciphers, presentations, um, performances, and I fucked with it. And it it was that for the whole time. So I got used to it. I was conditioned to it to the point where I started to expect it. So then, as it started to change, 
And as the bigger names started to not come and then they weren't presenting awards, it felt like just a festival. I'm just like, this isn't what I'm used to. This isn't what I like. Like, if it's an award show, nigga, give out awards. Like, Absolutely. This year, for example, they gave Travis Scott the I Am Hip Hop Award, which is it. I have my own separate issue with, with that. <laughs> but, and Kendrick won, like, a lot of the awards, too. So, like, Fat Joe had a, had a section where he was like, Kendrick won eight awards. Shout out to Kendrick. Obviously, he's not here, so I'm going to get it on his behalf. I'm just like, my nigga, I'm, I'm literally just watching performances. And then they had a Rich Homie Quan tribute. The DJ only played like two, like songs. two songs. I'm like, bro, yeah. what the fuck are that we doing? That was disrespectful. Granted, the thug is in jail. Like a, a, a lot of the people who probably could have done the tribute justice, either like are in jail or couldn't be there. I get it. I'm just like, bro, Rich Homie Quan got more than two songs for you to play. Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, it just, it it, it felt very like it. It honestly felt like they knew they could do whatever because niggas wasn't really watching. Niggas mm-hmm. didn't really care. I feel like that's Nick, why they gave Nicki that award. For the best um, hip hop album of the year, mm-hmm. and she liked my tweet. Yeah, Shout yeah. out to my I saw, sis. I saw that, I saw that. You know, I'm like, hold on, let me act like I'm still on contract, and let me not <laughs> engage too much. But I was cracking the fuck up just knowing the history yeah. <laughs> of the relationship with Nicki and the network, yeah. like you know. But yeah, giving her all those awards and not giving Meg anything, it was just. I don't know what's happening anymore because at this point, like, ignorance is truly bliss mm-hmm. because now that I know so much on the back end and mm-hmm. on, like, the business tip, I'm just like, so what What are we watching here? Yeah. What is this happening right now? Yeah. What's the last good award show y'all think y'all seen? Because every, every time an award show comes on, you can literally go on Twitter and be, like, and see, like, everybody say, like, yo, this sucks. Like, from, like, the BMAs I'm to, like, front. anything. The, I liked the 2022 BET Awards. I liked the pandemic one. Was, pandemic one was cool too. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, the pandemic one was fire to cool. me. Like, cause, cause they put a lot of creativity, creativity, and effort into like, cause the performances were all recorded. Yes, taped, like you, like know, you visuals, had to be creative. Effects, all that. Like, you know, the, the they they kind of were like, all right, these are the times. These are our limitations. How can we make some fire within that? And like, they did that. Was that was, the, they set the challenge. standard for award shows in the pandemic to yeah. me. Cause then I remember the Grammys kind of did their own sort of version of that in 2021 because they had a very limited like attendee type thing. What year did um Chris Rock get slapped? <laughs> uh, that was the 2022 Oscars. Oh, okay. Wow. Oh, that shit. That was a good one too. Yeah. I mean it was. Yeah, this is, this is, bro, I I, I, I was home writing, not even watching. I heard about the slap. I turned it on. I watched the rest of the shit. I was like, damn, the Oscars <laughs> pop off like this. What what else gonna happen? And, and, and then you see Will win his, like give his that was crazy and too. get embraced yeah. by mad black yeah, legends like, after slapping the shit out of Chris salute, Rock. Bro. I couldn't believe every year. I now. couldn't believe it was real, bro. I couldn't believe it was no, real. I, I knew it was real when once Chris cursed on air. That's an FCC file. He was like, mm. he said, Will just slapped the shit. Shit out of me! I was like, "Oh, that, that was nigga, real." That nigga got up from his seat. Keep my walk. wife's name out your fucking mouth. <laughs> yes. And then Lupita, Lupita in the yeah. back. <laughs> Hold yeah, on. Y'all are funny as fuck. No. I'm sorry for bringing this up, but no, it's really, no, it's no, really no, one no. of the craziest no, moments in like because they don't give it up like that no yeah, more. Yeah, like like the Grammys every year. I, I think they're well run, but. We don't get moments at the Grammys yeah. like yeah, they, they not we are like, not having none of that monkey shit. <laughs> you, you, you you niggas <laughs> keep that shit away. <laughs> keep that shit at the source of war. Like, like yeah. we, we don't get that. So Did, didn't Will Smith get banned from the Oscars too? Like is he is he banned? Uh, I uh, it's some shit like that. Yeah, I yeah, I, it was something. Tough I, luck, my nigga. Yeah, you I, had don't, to, I don't fully remember. I, I, love, I love Will Smith bad. Legend, like, legend. Love him. Guy. He's one of my favorite entertainers. Bro. Him and Jane Fox. And the movie he won it for was amazing. The 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 Serena uh, or his like their dad movie the uh... oh matter of fact let me watch that shit tonight bro that shit mm. is amazing I love that movie. yeah that shit yeah was good as hell um, but yeah no like and I think I mean the general interest in most award shows is gone like when I was a kid obviously I watched the Kids Choice Awards mm. the VMAs the and then on top of the BET stuff the Grammys like. It was an activity that my family would do. Now I'm older. I got to cover these things. So I, I watch them for work. But if I wasn't co- covering these shows for work, I'd probably only watch the Grammys, to be honest. Right. Like, that's just, that's and really not it. even that. Yeah. Like, I, I, and honestly, most award shows don't even, like, the Grammy still presents a good amount of awards, but a lot of them shits, like, 
most of the hip hop awards now they they, they they do it at the pre show. You like Facts. now they was boycotting that yeah, shit in the eighties. Yeah, like, that shit been happening. Yeah, like because the, they also select it based on like who is there, who who's the biggest name that's mm. getting it. No, they so. just disrespectful to black people. No, for sure, I I, I completely agree. Like like. Cause Killer Mike won and they didn't bring him up. Like Hove was gonna bring him up, but then he got a- arrested at the Grammy. So it's oh, just yeah. like, but Kendrick's here. <laughs> that nigga was definitely on stage talking. So you and know. hold on, I must say this on record. I think I influenced Hove's speech that year. Why is that? Okay. I think I did. I think I did. Just, just tell us. Because I made a post on United Masters about um the previous boycotts um against the Grammys mm-hmm. that like the hip hoppers did in the eighties and mm-hmm. whatever. And then um, I saw Steve liked it, and they were at the Grammys together. Mm. So in my mind, mm. they was riding around in the Talking. black car together, like, yo, remember when this shit happened, son? Yeah. And then Hove went on stage and said that shit. So yeah. y'all welcome. That's my contribution to Miss Mr. Society. B's just opened her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody get her the Grammy right Real now. quick. Okay. But yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not tapped in to... No, actually... I cover the BT Awards every year, mm-hmm. so I do have like a little, you know, a little emotional attachment to the award show and stuff. But I think you know we all touched on interesting points because you're right. The consumers can be influenced, mm-hmm. and that's why I feel like it's so important for us to hold the standard high. Yeah, because we can't keep on like giving in to what they are saying because like the shit is not centered around television anymore. It's yeah. all you know. I, algorithms and all these little fan bases and everyone just doing their own individual thing like yeah. we're not all tapped in to like one thing at the same time and mm-hmm. people saying like like a journalist saying like nah this nigga is next up he's hot yeah you know so but honestly this year like i it felt like people really didn't even care like i like in the past i would have been actively scrolling the timeline to see people's reactions and live tweet when I was covering the award show, I I really didn't even like check Twitter. Also, there there was a sports game on that night. I think that was a Tuesday. So oh yeah, had, yeah, they like it you had, was clocked out for yeah, sure. It, it <laughs> had to be a baseball game. So literally, <laughs> I, I I had two performances to cover. I had to cover two chains and I had to cover um uh but Boss Man D-Lo. Shout out to Boss Man D-Lo. Shout out to him. I, 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 I fuck I, with him. I, I really liked his performance. Like it was dope. It was dope. Remember when? You saw that video when he said, what y'all want me to do, rap like Kendrick Lamar? <laughs> I yeah. showed him last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. I showed him last week. This nigga was getting weak. <laughs> that shit. But that shit was funny. I, like, I love him even more now. Yo, yeah, he's, he's dope. He's dope. He's like, I, I, I really <laughs> hope. <laughs> nigga was going crazy. I, yeah. I really hope that he like keeps this energy and momentum that he has because there's an organic love for him that people have. He He's funny. Like He's making good music. Like I... I I don't want him to be another. Damn, that nigga let mm-hmm. me down, fell off. So keep doing your thing, Boss Man D-Lo. But another thing, these award, uh, the hip hop awards specifically, a lot of old acts like Trina, Two Chains, Soldier Boy perform. I'm, I'm never gonna be mad to see Soldier Boy do like all the way turned up. That was crazy. crazy. I got up. 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 I, I like for for West Coast representation, okay, but yeah, that was kind of random. I ain't really think. But if he want to send some wine for us to taste on the show, <laughs> oh for sure, we I'm with that. Um, two chains I like because I think people forget early 2010s two chains. Big City bro. boy, my nigga, I'm different. My fucking uh, birthday song, I, I love them strippers. And then you go a little later, rich as fuck. Watch out, little bitch. <laughs> watch out, <little> bitch. <laughs> no, watch out, little bitch. <laughs> the push, the push <laughs> he had too from from Kanye and good music. Yeah, time. bro. Like the art direction, everything just got elevated so crazy, and you was just like, "What the fuck is happening?" And then it was like his verse on Mercy, like, yeah. like yeah. it was like, yeah. "Oh, like this nigga's really having a moment." He was, like, he's he, like he was here. one of the like, most highly coveted feature acts, and. Uh, even though chains. his own discography may not be the best, like like you, you throw I mean, future. Duffel Bad I mean, Boy was a little. Was a du- oh, Duffel Bad Boy is incredible. Yeah, yeah, like like you throw two chains on someone else's shit. He's he, he's he's gonna elevate it. So it was shit. cool to see him um get that moment. Um, but yeah, like 
the I think I have the roster of like everyone who performs. I'm trying to remember. It was it's, it's that one nigga with that song left. Do it right. <laughs> do it. Is that th- 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 three ten something? So uh, made, some, some I don't city, fucking know, I'm... but I'm like truthfully, I know the TikTok sound. I don't know him. I don't know the name of the song. Like so when he performed, I was like. Oh, that's the nigga who sings that shit. Oh okay. my god, we're the new adults. Don't give a fuck, but I'm like, oh, that's you, and I'm just like, bro, right. like do you it, can't be getting bro. these niggas do who have it. one hot TikTok song on this stage. You, but this is the this that's is the, the era, era that where, we're in. You know, I watched. Um, I was doing social media management for one client, and mm-hmm. their content is like um, music business concentrated or whatever. Yeah. And Nelly was talking about like back in the artist development days, how labels didn't even announce a new artist until they spent years Mm -hmm. getting developed to be the artist that they were supposed to be. So like he was already going through artist development for years before his debut album. So that's why it just seemed like banger after banger after banger. And I'm just like, yo, we need to get back to that. And I think TDE did that with their latest um... it's, it's, it's people who try to do it but they get called industry plans that's why I said <laughs> like, that's, 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 and that's why I said like in the first episode like, industry plans are not a bad term yeah. bro that's I wish niggas was industry plans yeah bro you better like... wish you were a lot <laughs> yeah. of niggas wish a lot of niggas it's like yeah mm-hmm. bro a lot of people a lot of people have backwards uh, backwards idea of that they think it's bad but it's yeah. actually amazing somebody call you an industry plan that means yeah they took your time and mm-hmm. like you're that good that yeah. they literally had to develop you for years just because they're banking on you to be like you're like a number one draft pick. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. like, bro, you're I'm, the franchise, my nigga. I, I, I don't, I don't want to rehash this, but like, <laughs> Four Bats and Jeremiah just dropped a fired song this weekend. What's the boy sent you that preview? Huh? Oh, I thought no, you got the preview from his no, team. No, I, I, I got I'm about to say, I heard that shit. Nah, Spotify, but like, but I listened to the full drums. Like, yo, this. Oh, is it like, came out already. Yeah, it's, it's oh. out. It's, yeah. You don't know. Like, like well, we don't be knowing these things. No, it was in my email. Like, the thing mm-hmm. with the marketing, too, I explained that. I'm mm-hmm. just like, I don't know when shit be no, out. No, no, yeah, that's that. I, 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 I wasn't trying to play you. I'm just no, like, no, in general, niggas don't be knowing when shit is out. No, like, like dead ass. Like, yeah. It would just be a post, and I'm like, oh, this post means it's out. I yeah. thought this mm-hmm. post was, mm-hmm. like, the announcement that it's coming. Mm-hmm. All right, bet. And then between when shit circulates on TikTok before yeah. it's even out, like, mm. you might think, oh, shit, like, this, I hear this all the time. Let me play this song. It's not even out. It's a snippet. Like that ass. I hate that shit. Bro, I thought Glow's album was out for like two weeks before. Because <laughs> of the cover art. I've seen that but, shit yeah. everywhere. Like, she she, she the dropped fuck? a mixtape earlier this year, but mm-hmm. it didn't really take off. But like I almost I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. It was it was like an April, April thing. Like right off the back of um uh yeah, Glow. She dropped a mixtape. I was like, oh, okay. Man. I think that I think wannabe was on that. The mm. the shit with Meg. Um, but yeah, then like six months later she comes with the album. But yeah. Um it's just, it's just different times, and, and I accept it. Like I, I'm not here whining. I'm not here like depressed. But I'm just like I'm depressed. I'm pissed because I have to cover this shit. So if I if I'm sitting there for three hours for work watching it and then having to write about it, like Bossman D'Lo, as much as I enjoyed the performance, I didn't really have much to write about because he did like two songs, <laughs> and that was it. It was like he was sitting on the couch, strippers were dancing next to him, then he went on stage, the strippers dance on the stage. What was really shit else to say? Two chains, same thing. Like he he did five songs, and there was the nostalgia aspect. It was just strippers there. It was like, what the fuck else am I supposed to say, bro? Like, oh, he <laughs> also, he's also uh, he's calling himself the hottest free agent now because his oh, deal yeah. with Def Jam is over. Yeah, my like, two chains, bro. I'm, uh, bro, you, you, you like fifty two? Sorry to burst your bubble. Like you, you, you like fifty two, bro? I'm sorry, you you you're not a hot free agent. They you, didn't they didn't want to resign. You. Yeah, it's 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 clip <laughs> it's clip, brother. You're not. But um, you know, so it's, it's just yeah, that too. if if this is something that we have to create content for and from, like uh, two people on my staff, they they were gonna do a, a best moments list, and they started with the with the base number of ten. They had to reduce it to six, and I can't even think of six best moments f- from that show. <laughs> I'm just like, bro, like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, somebody's lying. It's and it's not me. It's sad. It's sad. Like I, the, I, I listen to the Joe Budden pod to kind of react to it because they're older. So I, I want to get their perspective because they, they, much like us, they remember you know the prime of the the BET Awards and they were like they they just shouldn't even do it. They should just fold it into the 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 B the the individual BET Awards. Like BET Hip Hop doesn't need its own thing. I'm like given the, given the effort they put in, I don't need to watch performances on live TV. And just that, like, and and one one presentation, 
I, I like I, I don't need to do that. I, I go to shows all the time. I don't need to watch it on my TV and cover it. So like I get it. Again, I do appreciate that hip hop gets its own night, but like it, it needs to be a bit more mm-hmm. fulfilling than just seeing it perform. Like you should mm-hmm. like the b- b- best new artist, ideally that person is there. You that should get presented to them. They should talk. We should see what they we don't know what these niggas look like sometimes. So like we should see them there that they should actually present that like best duo group. Yeah, I'm sure future and Metro wouldn't have went, but like that would have been a really cool moment for them. Like back in the day, th- that that would have been a huge moment. To see them, 100%. On, st- to see them like, on stage accepting the award and like talking yeah. together. Especially after like, in the, the suits the and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like they would be like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, but we used to really get like, niggas used to give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Nigga, the source, like even the source awards, like mm-hmm. shit, like, yeah, we don't have, we, we can, yeah, it's yeah. just, it's kind of sad. Yeah. Like, it's not yeah, kind of, yeah. it is. Yeah. It's... Like, bro, we had ben, Britney Spears kissing Madonna, like, crazy shit used to happen, my nigga. Come on, man. Like, on, Kanye man. went on stage literally. and said, Taylor Swift doesn't deserve this award, my Yo, nigga. literally, little mama. Bro, after handing the bottle to Joe Jackson, my nigga, <laughs> like, you know how crazy this is? Like, I saw that picture the other day, and I said, nah, Kanye was on one He was that on night. one. And then Joe took a sip and handed the bottle back. I was like, oh yeah, these niggas is on bullshit. I wish I was in the room that night. Bro, do y'all remember when Con- Kanye debuted Runaway at the VMAs? Yeah. Was just sitting there. Ding. Moments. Yes. Bro. We used to get moments. <laughs> yeah. That shit went off for like five minutes. And, and you was just messing with me. Like, yeah, you're like, oh what's my this God. nigga about to do? And then. Yeah. I was like, oh in the, shit. In the all is... red. Pusha T comes out, does his verse 24 7, 360. I'm like, yo, this shit hard, bro. Even the pop stars Moments. are giving it up better. Right. Lady what? Gaga, what, mm-hmm. what um, award oh show God. was that? When she was like in the fake blood and like mm-hmm. walking in through the, the crowd. Stuff. Yeah, 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 like they were giving it up. Everyone was giving it up crazy yeah. before. Nigga, what mm-hmm. was that? What was that award show that that Fifty walked around all his ops and was performing? <laughs> I didn't know BT. And niggas, oh, yeah. niggas was not niggas gonna do shit. That, that, he was like was performing. It was like he was dapping or niggas BT up. Hip hop awards. Yeah, it was like 2007, 2008. Bro, yeah. award shows used to Artists, be crazy. Artists, consumers, bro. like everything, like needs to get fixed up. Like we need just people who care. Yeah. Across the board. Yeah. What's the, what's that one? What was, the, it, was it? Had to be the BET Awards when Rick James and Tina Marie. Did the duet and yeah, was like it was mm. a BT award. Mm-hmm. Like, come on, that's legendary. My mom cried shit. that night, like because like my like she was like her favorite artist is uh Tina Marie, and like to see that shit was like crazy. Yeah. And like to have moments when you connect with your parents over like older music yeah, or something bro. that they yeah. like, it's like oh real okay. special. Yeah, yeah special is like okay. I want Chris Brown honored Michael Jackson after he was black bro, nigga mm-hmm. was crying. Yo, I was crying. Stage, bro. <laughs> I was crying yeah, I was too. Like, Damn, that was like, hard. Like, I forgot you, about you that. Really you felt him, bro. No, I seriously, about that. I was crying. As I soon as he about... kneeled, I was like, nah, Chris. Damn, bro. Yeah, <laughs> we used to get moments. Monique was a Monique was like one of the best hosts yeah, ever. She hosted like eight times. Like yo, she they, performed. They had her on retainer. No, <laughs> about to they need her again. Watch old. All oh, the award shows. She performed yeah. Crazy in Love in front of Beyonce yeah. and Debut B was like a real special. Like, you know, that's when they was blaming her for breaking up Destiny's Child oh, and shit. Yeah. So it was like a special, special time. Yeah. I Damn. think uh, so, Damn, like Serena son. Williams like joined Destiny's Child mm-hmm. and like did choreography with yes. them. Yes. They, or... they all serenaded Terrence Howard. I was just about to say that. Moment. that wow. Yo, for, oh my goodness like, gracious. That right there, I literally remember that shit. Yeah. Nah. Oh my and I'm, I'm just like gracious. when when the when the teenagers now they are no our idea. age, they are, no are they gonna have moments that no. they reflect on in, in the way that we are? No. I mean, in many ways, though, I feel like a hypocrite because we are sitting on an executive side of things while complaining. So I do feel like we can make the change that we want to see. It can't be like one of us or two of us, but I do think that like a movement, like. We're the ones. It's it's us and our friends that's producing our this shit. Our friends are managing the artists. Our friends are producing the songs. Like low key, I do kind of feel a little hypocritical about complaining about it at the same time. Yeah. You know, that's why I always make sure. Like when I when I feel like something suck, mm-hmm. I gotta say it. Yeah. Like, even if it's not popular, like I gotta say it. Yeah. Nah, I was I, I myself like I, I tweeted about the BT Hip Awards after it was over, and I was like, damn, is is Mr. B still working for them? Like I, I hope I hope I don't offend her, but I was like. I tweeted, it was the most uneventful award show I've ever watched. The performances, half of them were good. They didn't present any awards, no ciphers, and the Rich Homie Quan tribute. Pretty much everything I said here, I tweeted it. 
I like and, that. Yeah. It just likes our head in there. <laughs> and and, and <laughs> like th- th- there were people that agree with me, and one dude was like, yeah, man, like they need to do this and this. And I was like, nigga, good luck. <laughs> All that shit you suggested, they not going to do. It's, it's not That'd be the happen. funniest shit when niggas be suggesting like, the like, craziest these, shit. You know what? they're not like word. You think, like with who, bro? Okay. So salute to you for being optimistic. Like, like <laughs> I, 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 I envy people who still have that childlike optimism because I've, I've just kind of with with certain things I've, I've, I've lost it. And, yeah, bro. And and it's okay. Like I, I, I don't need award shows again. But I'm just like, it was such a big part of 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 the culture. It was like. Because obviously the Grammys would we niggas don't always get Grammys, but like BT Awards, they they were kind of held to a certain esteem. Like when Lil Wayne came through and swept that shit, it was a moment. It was a fucking moment. I'll never forget it. Cause he was in the midst of his of his run. And now it's like these niggas don't care. Like they don't they don't even give a fuck. They don't even give a fuck. So it sucks. It it really sucks. But it's times that we're in. So yeah, I I just needed to come and event about that to to yeah. some to some people who I felt like could agree, um, because I I did not enjoy that experience and especially the site like bro I ah oh, man yeah I I remember in high school after watching the award show all the cyphers got uploaded to YouTube yeah. the, the MMG cipher the one where it was um Rev Run Diggy Russie yeah and then Ice Cube and his sons. The good music one, the slaughterhouse one, like t- too many fucking good. Like, and I get the rappers now don't lend themselves to that type of style. There are some. Maybe you just go completely underground. Like you, like you just fully make it like a thing to elevate people's platforms. Exactly. Like do that rather than looking for the young acts or or even vets. Like just make it completely like a competition. Like ha- have niggas submit and have niggas do it. I remember. I think it was like two uh two BT hip hop awards ago. HD Ben Dope had like mm. the, the, during the commercial breaks, he he was doing the freestyles and he announced his EP during the freestyles. Like, yo, that's dope. Like shit like that. Get, and granted, he he's Rock Nation. So he, you know, he he probably has don't a much make me easier. Call Rock Nation. Yeah. Huh? Oh my <laughs> I said, God. don't make me call Rock Nation. <laughs> oh my God. So, you know, he, he, he <laughs> probably, has, for this. <laughs> probably has a much easier in than, mm-hmm. you know, like an act who's fully independent. But I don't know. I I think that they just there's talent out there and if they care enough they can find it and they can supply those things but yeah that's our episode for this week let us know your thoughts on award shows do you do you give a fuck i honestly do, do you give a fuck do we still Facts. need them do, do we need them should the bet awards and the hip-hop awards be one mm-hmm. mm. let us know your thoughts on that kendrick lamar uh interview with SZA. <laughs> uh let us know your thoughts on king slime ye- ye- young thugger thugger um sharing his sentiment on on music today uh tommy richmond let us know your thoughts on everything we want to hear from you tweet us don't tweet comments me. all that stuff tag us just be respectful right. be resp- it's one dude in, in our youtube comments who i almost replied to who like he's 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 very aggressive he he'd be using all caps and he'd be, he'd be, he'd be getting a little personal i'm like you know what i'm just gonna let you and your like three subscribers just Mm-hmm. You know, he, he screaming to the void, but he he almost got me the other day. He almost got me off my pivot. What he said? What he said? He he he, he, said, he, he just, just saying some shit. He just saying some shit. You, you go look. It's, it's 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 our our very last episode. He, All right. He's uh, I, I'm not I'm not even gonna I'm not I'm not gonna say their name or dignify no free promo you know, what they said by alluding to what you said. But just know, I I, I almost I almost cooked you. But <clears throat> anyways, for the gang, for Will. For Mr. B's and for myself, the Bald Nigga Bombshell, we want you to stay safe, stay humble, and stay, stay busy. busy. <laughs>